Take a few seconds to look at this question. Which of the following are the best ways to stop rodents getting into a food premises? A. Using internal poison baits, proofing and maintenance of buildings. B. Proofing, maintenance of drains and maintenance of buildings. C. Clearing vegetation, training staff and proofing. Or D. Proofing, using cats and training staff to report sightings. Pause now to think about this. The answer is B. To answer the question, you first must be clear on what is being asked. The key words here are stop rodents getting into a food premises. The question is asking you how to stop them getting in. Answer A includes internal poison baits. This won't stop the rodents getting in. It poisons them once they're in. Answer C includes clearing vegetation. This will prevent harbourage outside and allows you to detect the presence of pests. Answer D, well, you've probably identified cats as a bit of a joke answer. If anything, though, cats will kill pests. They won't stop them getting in. B, therefore, is the only possible answer. Let's take a look at another question. You'll be instructed to clean work surfaces in the following work areas using the same equipment. Where would you start? Before looking at the answers, think about the question. What is it asking? Although it doesn't specifically say so, you can hopefully appreciate the question is talking about cross-contamination. The options are A. Ready-to-eat salad B. Vegetable preparation C. Raw poultry or D. Raw fish When you take the exam, there's nothing to stop you making notes on the question paper. So let's draw some options. If we start with raw poultry or raw fish or dirty vegetables and then clean the salad area, bacteria will be spread from the source to the ready-to-eat food. Therefore, these are all wrong. However, if we start with a salad and then clean the raw poultry, this is fine. There is no cross-contamination. The answer, therefore, is A. There will probably be several questions like this where you have to imagine the scenario in your mind's eye and it may help to make notes on the question paper. Now, let's take a look at another question. This time it does clearly state what is being asked. Have a look at the question and mentally underline the key words. Which of the following is a control measure used to prevent the contamination of high-risk foods with pathogens. What are the key words? The key words are control and contamination. When taking the exam, feel free to underline words on the question paper. This will help to focus the mind. Firstly, let's see if all the answers include controls. Remember, controls are actions required to prevent or eliminate a hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. Calling food rapidly? Yes, this is a control. Minimising the time of food preparation at room temperature? Yes, this is a control. C, recording temperatures? No, this refers to documentation. D, colour-coded cooking equipment? Yes, this is a control. So now we have three answers to choose from. The odds are getting better. A, cooling food rapidly. B, minimising the time of food prep at room temperature colour-coded cooking equipment. Now let's take a look at the second word, contamination. Does cooling food rapidly prevent contamination? No, it reduces the or slows the opportunity for bacterial multiplication. Minimising the time of food preparation at room temperature, does this prevent contamination? No, again it li limits the opportunity for multiplication. Colour-coded equipment? Yes, this prevents cross-contamination and therefore is our answer. This is the key to answering many of the exam questions. Be clear in your mind exactly what is being asked. The question here is asking about contamination and therefore your answer should too. There are likely to be a number of questions where the question refers to either contamination, multiplication or survival and you have to select the correct answer. 
Let's do an exercise on this. A number of words or phrases will appear on the screen and you need to identify whether they refer to contamination, multiplication or survival. Thoroughly cooking food. Does this refer to contamination, multiplication or survival? Pause the video if you need to. This relates to survival, ensuring bacteria cannot survive cooking temperatures. So if your question is asking about survival, this is likely to be your answer or one of the potential answers. Throwing away out of date food. The answer is multiplication. Wasting out of date food ensures bacteria do not have the time to multiply. Colour coded cooking equipment. This helps prevent contamination. Drawing pins in the kitchen. This relates to contamination, specifically physical contamination. Material spores. Survival. Using chemical containers to store food in. Contamination, specifically chemical contamination. Storing food at low temperatures. Multiplication, storing in the fridge slows down bacterial multiplication. Food high in sugar or salt. Multiplication, ensuring bacteria do not have sufficient water available to multiply. Alternatively, the question may ask you about a specific section of HACCP. For example, as we saw earlier, throwing away out-of-date food. Pause now if you need to, and have a think about which section of HACCP this referred to. It refers to corrective actions. Using a probe to check temperatures. Pause now and think about which section of HACCP this refers to. It relates to monitoring. Writing down temperatures. Pause. Documentation. And one more, 75 degrees C. This is a critical limit. Here's a quick summary of the main points in this video. You need to be clear in your mind exactly what is being asked, and it helps to underline sections of the question paper to ensure you've identified the key word. In particular, you will need to establish whether the question is asking about contamination, multiplication, or survival. For some questions, you need to imagine the scenario in your mind's eye, and again, making notes on the question paper may help.